As you've probably deduced by the title, I'm finally going to go ahead and build that uh, Funny Playing SP uh, that you guys have been asking me so much for. Uh, I would like to make something clear. I did pick up this kit with my own money, and I did buy it because I was going to buy it anyway, not because you guys asked. Though I do appreciate, you know, you letting me know what you want to see. I was planning on doing this anyway. Anyway, um, so it comes here in a small box, about this big. And inside that box, one of these hard plastic cases. And by the way, finish rustling with that before I continue. Um, funny playing, whoever you are, if you're watching this video, this is an amazing idea. I don't know what these cases cost you in bulk. I don't know, probably like 25 cents, 50 cents a pop. But this is such a good idea for shipping because it pretty much guaranteed to protect your, your parts. Um, but anyway, pop this bad boy open. We have a piece of foam. I'll get back to this in a minute. The LCD itself. Now this is the exact same physical LCD as goes in the uh, Game Boy Advance versions of this mod. Uh, both V1 and V2, exact same LCD, same connector on the bottom. The only difference is this is laminated to a lens already, and this lens is for the Game Boy Advance SP. Um, the lettering is excellent on this lens, in my opinion. Uh, it's not not quite OEM for reference. We have here their SP, and you can see they're somewhat different. Uh, very similar, nonetheless, but still not quite the same thing. Uh, either way, very good high quality lettering, even if it is a little bit different. On some of the other cheaper lenses, it's uh, it's not so great, let's put it that way. <clears throat> and then the last thing in here is the actual ribbon cable adapter itself and a wire. And uh, I'll get to all this in a minute. This case, by the way, um, it's not going to fit a Game Boy Advance or an SP, unfortunately, it's too small. But uh, if you do have a Game Boy Micro, it is the perfect size for that. And uh, excellent case for a Game Boy Micro. And yes, I did go over that in one of my other videos, but if you haven't seen that, then well, there you go. Anyway, um, I did already install the Game Boy Advance version of the kit in a Game Boy Advance SP, and you can see my installation had a few downfalls. Uh, m most importantly, that the uh, screen itself isn't quite centered within the shell, so there's barely any bezel on the right hand side here, and there's tons of bezel on the left. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine for me, but the biggest, um, <clears throat> I guess, issue with this installation is that this is the V1 kit that I showed in here. So it does have that diagonal screen tearing effect and you can scroll through some of my other videos if you want to see that more in depth, but I think we'll go ahead and get this installed in another SP. I'm going to leave this one as is for now. Um, before I begin though, I do want to say a couple things in anticipation of some of the comments that I may or may not receive. Um, first and foremost, these are my consoles. I can do whatever the hell I want with them. Um, second, these things are meant to be played, so if these mods actually let me play my console, then so be it. Third, this console is in pretty shitty shape to begin with, but tonight's donor is a Pokemon Special Edition Venusaur uh, SP, and I do already have it on and running a game here, uh, but it's just in Pokemon Emerald, as you can see, works just fine. Can't probably see that because it's not in focus, but I don't know. It is what it is. Can't see shit because it's too reflective, um, but let me turn this off and you can get a better look at this screen here. The screen itself is not in that great condition. 
Maybe you can't see. There we go. <clears throat> I mean, it works just fine, but there's tons of dust underneath the lens and underneath the light panel, and um, the lens is pretty scratched up. It's it's overall it's it's okay. Uh, this thing is a very highly used console, very very loved in its previous life, and I think I'm gonna uphold that as I uh, as I make it better, as I improve it. Um, but for those who have tried, AGS-001 screens are not very easy to clean at all because the light panel, you touch that with your bare fingers, the oils will get in there and they are next to impossible to clean without completely ruining. So yeah, cleaning these is not easy. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I did already take this apart and start cleaning it and I was going to put it back together for this video. Um, pretending that I had never taken it apart, but I forgot to put this in, and uh, so battery cover just falls right off. <clears throat> but that's okay, because we're taking it apart anyway. And yes, this is definitely Pokemon Emerald. No, I'm kidding. It's um, my Inside Gadgets flash cart. I just put it in this SimCity 2000 case because I had a broken bootleg, and it had a cool case. Anyway, besides the point, Take part in SP. First thing you need to do, take off that battery cover. It's just a small Phillips screw and then it'll pop right out. You can pop out your battery and then there are six tri-wing or tri-point, whatever you want to call them, screws around the periphery. Four long ones, two short ones. And once you've got all six of them out, the bottom will just lift off there. And you can keep those in their position. Well, they won't go anywhere. The power switch in my case is sticking in the bottom. Uh, the shoulders usually always stick in the bottom. Oh. <clears throat> but I'm going to want to flip this over, so I'm going to dump out the screws. If nothing else because I need to put the square nut back in so that I can actually screw the battery cover back down. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what's going on with me today. I keep having to clear my throat. usually fit into place. It's not always the easiest thing to get in, which is surprising with how easy it is to lose it. Uh, anyway, once you've got that taken care of, there are just three small Phillips screws. By the way, with an SP, there are essentially only four different screws. Um, you either have a short screw or a long screw with either a Phillips head or a tri-point head. Uh, but once you've got those three screws out, I find it's helpful to open up the console, give you a little bit more slack on the ribbon cable, so that when you lift this motherboard up, you can kind of hinge it up to get to that ribbon cable. And you just got to slide the bail down, and the ribbon cable will drop out. And then from here, once you've got all the buttons, all the membranes accounted for, you can set this aside. We'll, we'll need to do some work on this in a minute, but not quite yet. Actually, you know what? Before we continue, let's do a little experiment. Oh wait, no. No, I'll get the screen out first. I think it'll be easier. I'm going to go ahead and take out all the buttons. By the way, if you are not reshelling your console, you will definitely want to take this opportunity to clean it, especially if you've never opened it before, whether it's your original console from way back when, or it's an aftermarket con or used console that you picked up. Either way, you're going to want to take this opportunity to clean it. It's already open. Do yourself a favor. Also, if you're handy with a soldering iron, you're probably going to want to clean the um, <clears throat> clean the power switch as well. 
I've already done that on this console because it was uh, it was acting up. It was giving me some hassle. So I just wanted to get that taken care of ahead of time. And then I ended up having to clean up the rest of the shell because this thing was gross. Anyway, once you've got all the buttons out, there is one screw hiding underneath the ribbon cable. It's just a Phillips and it's a long one. But this is the hinge cover for the ribbon cable. And then once you've got that, it's on to the hardest part, at least what I think is the hardest part. If you're reshelling your console, then it's not too big a deal. You can mess these up without having to worry about it. But if you're trying to keep your console looking fresh, like I am, in the original shell, these things are pain in the butt to get out without ruining. I like to use a plastic pry tool and uh, if you slide it around these things slowly enough, usually you can get under there and pry them up. You gotta be careful though because these things do get a little bit brittle with age and yeah, I just, I just broke this one. I find that using metal tools to do this is not a good idea because you'll take chunks out of these little rubber covers or worse, the uh, take chunks out of the plastic surrounding them. To my knowledge, you cannot get replacement covers, especially not in this color. Green is not an aftermarket shell that is available which is rather unfortunate because it's a really nice color, even without the Venusaur engravings. Before I started using these plastic spudgers to get these off, it was actually recommended to me to use like a sewing needle or a safety pin to get these off. And I've tried that before. And it's the second easiest method, I think. The easiest method being uh, these plastic spudgers. These spudgers, I think, are a little bit more forgiving if you mess up. Okay. Once you've got all five off, go ahead and uh, give yourself a pat on the back if you didn't ruin everything. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back even if you did ruin everything because they're difficult to get off. But uh, once you've got all five, it is just five more short screws and then you are home free. If you are taking apart an AGS-001 console, which is the frontlet version, what I'm taking apart, those five screws are probably going to be tri-point. If you're taking apart an AGS-101 console, which, shame on you if you are for this mod, by the way, uh, but those are probably going to be Phillips. I have no idea why, but that's just been my experience. But I don't know why Nintendo did that. Why didn't they just keep the tri-wing? Anyway, as so those five are off, you should be able to just remove the cover like that. And then the screen will come right out. Now, you can leave your shell as is. You shouldn't need to take it apart anymore. Um, like I said, this is definitely a great opportunity to clean it which I think I might pause and get this thing cleaned up a little bit because it's kind of gross. But if you are reshelling your console, you're going to want to try and reuse these hinges. And if you have a 3D printer, I did make a tool that should make popping these hinges out significantly easier. Um, I'll link a video in the description with more info on this. Uh, but you 
but if you're using the same shell, you do not have to remove the hinges. This tool, you just insert it, you'll pop out the hinges out, and then you have to open the shell to its normal position, then you can use a uh, screwdriver or something to finish them off. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. What we want to do now, we want to go ahead and we want to see what kind of power or battery life we can expect out of this console. So I'm going to plug the original screen back in here. And I'm going to get my power tool here set to 2.75 volts which is too low for an SP so we'll bump that up to let's try for 3.7 ish good enough okay <clears throat> just to be sure I'm not royally fudging this up the one towards the outside this way is the ground and towards that way is the positive bias reference. I'm going to turn that off until I get these both hooked up. Minimize my chance of accidentally exploding something. was already on. Whoops. Alright, so just on the BIOS boot screen here, we're pulling about 20 to 24 milliamps. Depending on, oh geez. Now we're up to, depending on if I'm touching it, Jesus. Alright, well we'll not touch it then. We're at 20-ish. We turn the light off. <laughs> it goes down to zero. That's wonderful. My tool doesn't measure that low. Okay. We will use... Same cart here. This is my Pokemon Emerald bootleg. My Inside Gadgets flash cart. And we will get it into the on-screen menu, or the in-game, whatever. Oh, you probably can't even see that screen. I'm sorry. Trust me, it is on. It's just not that bright. All right. Now we are in that Pokemon Center where I saved. Pull in about 42, 43 milliamps. And if I switch the light off, goes down to 20-ish. I'm going to go ahead and swap, switch that off. Unplug the screw. Ooh. Shorted something, I think. You're probably fine, yeah. Luckily the Game Boy was off when I did that. All right. So this plugs in like this. Maybe. There we go. goes in there. And first let's try it without the game and I'm afraid my camera is going to cut out pretty soon but I think we'll be good. Alright so just on the BIOS screen, the bootloader, 
we're pulling 77 milliamps and of course the front light button isn't going to do anything because I don't have that wire hooked up yet. So yeah, it's the same. Switch that off. We'll try it with the game now. Yeah, yeah, internal battery. All right, so in game we're pulling about 93 milliamps. So I think it was at like 40 ish, which means in this specific case we're gonna we're gonna lose a good chunk of battery. If you were getting about 10 hours out of your console, prepare to get about four and a half. But that's okay. These things are rechargeable. Easy enough. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break before the camera cuts me off. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clean up this SP. It's a little bit gross. I did start cleaning it up earlier, but I think I can do a better job. So I'm gonna let the camera cool down. I will be back in just a moment. All right, so I think I got it cleaned up good enough to my liking here. Um, just, I just really wiped the shell down, but really it could have used a bath and some warm water and soap. Uh, let's let's just say that this microfiber cloth was one color when I started and uh, all I've done with it is clean this Game Boy and it's yeah Another way to put that I had to break the crust off in chunks Okay, enough of that grossness. So The top part of this part of the console the screen is gonna fit in this lens is designed to fit in this cutout perfectly. You should need no trimming whatsoever. It'll fit in there. Of course, don't forget to remove the plastic, but I'll, I'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna have to pop it out of here a few times. Uh, but if you go to put this on, you'll notice a few things, uh, mostly that it doesn't really fit. It's gonna need some trimming. Uh, so this side fits fine. Everything's happy, everything's copacetic, but this side is not. We're, gonna, we're going to have to do some trimming, and it actually turns out this, that this is the exact same trimming that I had to do when I crammed the GBA kit in here. But you gotta cut out this support right here. So that, on that side. And you can do it with a Dremel, it's pretty easy, but I think the easiest way is to Brace yourself, use some flesh cutters. If, you're, if you've got a clear shell, you'll probably want to finish this off with a Dremel. If not, well, whatever. You're not going to be able to see this through anyhow. As in, you're not going to be able to see this through the plastic. You'll definitely be able to see this project through, because I have faith in you. But I'm just scoring that a few times. And then... I'll have to clean this up later. I think this will work. But you've got all the supports snipped and the bottom scored. Just have to break this piece out. I don't think I have those supports snipped as well as I like as well as I think I did.
those of you watching and cringing about what I'm doing to this poor console. Take comfort in knowing that not only will this look so much better, but these mods are not visible from the outside. Oh, almost broke the blade. So, when I said you might want to go over this with the Dremel and smooth it out, I think I've actually got a, uh, I don't think I'll need to do that with mine. I'm not going to anyway because you won't see this from the outside. But, just getting all the chunks of material out. And in theory, you could do this with the knife as, instead of just breaking it out, but I'm pretty sure breaking it out is the easiest way. And then, you'll have to be careful of your test fits because you don't want to pinch that ribbon. But, hmm, it still doesn't fit quite right. Oh, yeah, it does. I'm just being too careful of the ribbon here. Okay. So that is it. And just for clarification here, this is where I cut out. This is what you see when it's closed. You can still, still see, well, or rather not see the gap in what I cut out. You can see it on the inside, but you won't see it because the screen will be there. Okay, so now, if you're reshelling your console, you'll want to uh, put your hinges back in. These hinge covers, by the way, slide off once you've got the hinges out. So if you're reshelling your console, you definitely want to use the original hinges, if possible. And then those should snap back in pretty easily. this thing I'm gonna go ahead and peel the plastic now it came off a lot easier than I had expected but whatever that fits in just like that the back of this thing is already insulated so you don't need to worry about that sitting on the metal case and then here is where you put the foam I'm just gonna hold it here for now because this ribbon cable, you want to introduce the same curl in it that the original has. This is to give it slack so that it doesn't, doesn't wear out prematurely while you open and close the console. And then from there, slip that back on. slide it open and see if I can't get these screws back in. Oh, sorry, bud. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it. I completely forgot and I meant to. But uh, this mod does work with both the AGS-001 and AGS-101 or AGT motherboards. Um, if you've got an AGS-101 motherboard laying around from, a, from an old GBA mod that you did, which, again, shame on you if you do, but, I mean, you might as well put it to use now. Um, yeah, the, for this particular mod, the, it's, it does not matter which motherboard you use. They're both the same because this thing does not tie into the voltage rail for the backlight. Uh-oh. Oh, there it goes. 
just needed to snap together kind of strangely. Those are all in. I'm going to not put the uh, rubber bumpers back in yet, just in case I need to get back in here for something. Otherwise, you can put your hinge cover back on. It's that nice long screw. Also, if you're reshelling, you want to use the original screws, if you can. If not, that's fine too, but just be aware that they'll strip out significantly easier. The aftermarket screws, that is. <clears throat> Pop your buttons in. Oh, and... I'm going to fire up my soldering iron because I am going to go ahead and hook up the brightness control. Completely optional, you don't need to if you don't want to. I've completely forgotten which Where's... which thing you need to hook it up to. You just want to hook it up to the brightness button itself, really. Okay, so I believe. Not that. Let's try an actual ground here. No? Okay, there we go. I just didn't have a good ground. So you can hook it up to the number two on the button. Or I believe the number four contact on the button as well. Yeah. Or you can use this Q12B test point. So either, let me go ahead and focus, you can either use number two right here, number four right here, or Q12B right here. Uh, most people opt for the test point because that's easier target to hit. I think that's what I'm going to do as well. So, and that wire, by the way, you got to solder to this. Oh, focus. Come on. There we go. To that contact right there on the ribbon cable. literally just to hold that while I solder. So if you've never soldered to a ribbon cable before, it's really not that difficult, but you do need to be extra careful. You want to tin your contacts first, first, both sides, and I'm going to solder to the ribbon cable first. Am I having a brain fart here? There we go. Okay. 
like that. And while not strictly necessary, I'm going to add a little bit of Kapton tape as both reinforcement and insulation. Because ripping the pad off would be an absolute shame. Not that I think it's likely, just want to take the precaution, because I can. Ta-da! Okay. Now, to solder this wire onto Q, this one, 12B. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, just a little bit of Kapton for insulation. Well, mostly for uh, protection, not really insulation, nothing to insulate it against. But otherwise, we are good to assemble this. So now you just need to flip this over and try and uh, magic that into the slot there. Sorry if I did that completely out of frame, but you'll have to play with it to get it to do what you want. Ooh, that was dangerous. There's a screw stuck to the speaker. And I tried closing it. So from here, it would just be normal reassembly. Um, pop the bottom on, make sure the shoulder buttons are lined up, make sure the power switch is lined up, screw in your six screws, insert your battery, screw in the battery cover, make sure that that's in there so that your battery actually works. But before I do so, I'm going to get the power supply back out. And we're gonna try the other brightness modes and see how see how much this thing is going to suck on our battery here So everything looks good. Looks like it's working nicely. I should turn that light off. So I gotta say this screen looks absolutely wonderful. In game. Power consumption is about the same, 90. But if we hit this brightness button, it goes up, one, two, and goes down to the lowest. So at the lowest brightness, we're at about 66 milliamps, which is not bad at all. And I'm pretty sure, gotta kill that volume, uh, that this is brighter than an AGS-101, which Good lord, I cannot believe I do not have within reach. 
Um, well, how about a 101 advance? I think it's, mm, I think it's about the same. It's hard to tell. But this is, I don't know. I'll have to go find a 101. But let's try this again. 73 at brightness 2. 80 at brightness 3. And this is the default brightness. 94 at brightness 4. Or 90-ish. And then 105 at brightness 5, which is the highest brightness. Oh, just kidding. That's the highest brightness. 130. I might have lost track. I thought there were only five levels. And then the lowest again. I'll be back in just one sec. Let me go find a 101. All right, let me go ahead and finish this video off with a 101 here. I'm going to pop the game out and just boot it up to a white screen here and I've got my uh, completely stock unmodified 101 the volume way up so on low brightness here they're both on low brightness they appear to be about the same brightness now looking at the camera I can see that the 101 is brighter so this gets darker and then on high brightness I think this is the default brightness. Let me switch it off and on again. Yep. So the default brightness is this about the same brightness as a stock 101, but then it gets even brighter. I think that's pretty cool. Myself. But yeah, so there you have it. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and finish the assembly up here. I'll probably do that off camera because I think my camera's about to shut off for the night. Um, but otherwise, I think I'm pretty happy with this mod. Uh, let me go ahead and get this assembled. I'll let the camera cool down and uh, I'll take some uh, pictures or some video. I'll show you how it compares with the original. Okay, so what we have here, I have two funny playing GBA SP well, two funny playing kits and two GBA SPs. Um, the one on the left is a GBA kit that I shoehorned into a, an SP. This is the V1 kit, whereas the one on the right is the one that I just went ahead and installed. This is the SP, the specific to SP kit. Um, but I just want to go ahead and showcase the differences in the two. These are both running Pokemon Emerald. You, oh. Let's, uh, let's try that again. There we go. You can see the differences. There's this like shimmery effect on the left one, whereas the right one is perfectly smooth. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what they did to fix the issue, but basically the screen is refreshing when the game is refreshing on the new kit finally. And so that should eliminate pretty much all of the... Uh, oops. of the uh, original issues that were reported. The screen tearing, the jelly scrolling, some people might have called it, but I don't know how well it's coming out in the video, but in person it is a significant difference. I'm really liking it. Um, next, let me go ahead and switch both of these off here. Pull the games out of both. Flip them both on. You can see that they both start at pretty much the same brightness level. Uh, this one has a few more brightness levels. I have to pick it up to change the brightness because this one requires hitting two buttons. Uh, whereas this one, you just hit the brightness button. And you can see the one on the left does get a little bit brighter. Uh, this is the uh, Game Boy Advance kit. For reference, we have here a regular V2 Game Boy Advance kit. Crank that up to max brightness, just for comparison's sake. And uh, 
It looks like it's about the same as this kit, which makes sense. But these two are the same generation, but these two are the same brightness, I think. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily that the SP kit isn't capable of going to the same brightness. I really think it is. I think it's more that they just limited artificially the levels that it can go to. Uh, as far as minimum brightnesses, you know, it's really hard to tell. I think these two are duller, again. These two are part of the same generation. These are both V2. Uh, this is a V1. I think the uh, full kits get a little bit darker. But, I mean, it's up to you if you want to shove a Game Boy Advance kit into a Game Boy Advance SP. I don't really think it's worth it. Looking at the fit and finish, this laminated display is so much better than anything I could I was able to come up with um, especially I mean look at it look at how much how off-center mine is compared to the official kit there actually they're right about the same oh no hmm. interesting It doesn't help that I got the, uh, this is just a clear glass lens. Doesn't help that I got the sticky gasket itself off center, whereas the screen is more centered. Yeah, looking at it, they look about the same. But final thoughts, of course, the V2 kit significantly better than the v1 kit if you have a choice get the v2 kit every single time if you don't the v1 kit is still definitely usable i've been using this game boy for a while i haven't really had any issues with it i'm going to start using this one though because this is better i think and it, it it just looks better the fit and finish the lens it's just nice i like it lastly i did end up peeling off that uh original ruined 001 sticker. I still have it. I'm going to stick it to some wax paper or something to save it. And I stuck on a genuine 101 sticker that I had just for uh, shits and giggles there. But uh, I think I want to get a custom made up, especially since this one's missing the Pokemon Center sticker anyway. But that's, that's irrelevant to the mod. That's just me talking about my Game Boy here. Um, otherwise, if you guys have any questions, anything you want me to test out, I will be more than willing to do so. But otherwise, I think this thing looks absolutely fantastic. This is a f great way to revive a, uh, a junky SP if you, if such a thing exists. Um, you know, if you have one with a broken screen or not so great screen or no screen whatsoever. I think this is a pretty good solution. <clears throat> uh, not to mention, you can get SPs with broken screens, dirt cheap 001 models. Um, I regularly find them for like $10 or less. Um, well, not regularly. Occasionally find them for $10 or less. Regularly find them for about 15 or so. Um, pick up one of those, maybe grab a new case, grab one of these screen kits. You're looking at less than the cost of one of these anyway for what I think is the better mod. The only thing, Jesus, focus, come on. All right, well, I guess, I guess we're not focusing. Um, the only thing this Game Boy has on the funny playing kits, I think, is going to be battery life. But even then, they were chargeable. That's not that big a deal. Um, I guarantee you this thing doesn't get the battery life it should anyway, just because it's on a damn near 15-year-old battery. Um, but, yeah, compared to the price, what these cost, I'd pick one of these any day, every day. I 
I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Again, if you all have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll be glad to shoot some test footage if you want, but trust me, there are not any issues on like, there are not any noticeable issues on like on the B1 kit. Um, unless there's some fringe scenarios that you can think of that you want me to test out. If there are issues, I'll go ahead and film it and put a video up on it, but I'll be glad to test it for you anyway. Uh, otherwise, you guys have an excellent night and uh, keep on being awesome.